Hi, I'm Ewan Udale, editor of Access International magazine, here at the Bauma show at the Terex AWP stand, talking to Scott Krieger, who's the senior product manager of AWP. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the launch of the world's largest mobile boom, uh, the 180 foot SX180. And I started by asking Scott, uh, what are the main benefits of the machine? We have a lot of new features with the SX180 and I'd, I'd like to start by saying this product has really been developed from the ground up based on a lot of customer feedback, a lot of surveys, a lot of input. We've had customers come to us and say we need bigger booms. We have work that's taking us higher and the end result is the new SX180 which we're introducing literally today on the first day of Bauma. Some of the key features and benefits of the, of the SX-180, and I can kind of start up at the top. When you go all the way to the top, it's 180 feet, it's 55 meters high. We have a 750 pound capacity or 340 kilogram capacity platform up there. We heard from customers, they said, look, we're going to go up high, we're going to work all day or work a long period of time. We need at least two people. We need at least to have their tools and any other equipment they need to bring up. We can't afford to be coming down and back frequently. So we've got a really high capacity platform up there. We've got a five stage mast. This is a 100 KSI material. Um, it's the first of its type. This is the tallest boom in the world, the tallest mobile boom in the world by 30 feet, by almost 10 meters. Again, we're trying to take customers where they're going to do their work, and that's why we're coming up with such a, such a tall machine here. You go up and back in about five minutes, up in five minutes, down in five minutes, nice and smooth. And from a serviceability standpoint, while we're talking about the boom, we wanted to make it very easy to do the service work. And when it comes to removing the extend cylinder, and the wires and the hoses and the couplings that are inside, in two hours, all of that can be on the ground. Some competitors' products, you might take a day or more to remove the same components. Our belief is that if it's easier to service, it's more likely to be serviced or to be, have problems dealt with, that results in better reliability, more uptime, better durability, and higher performance in the process. So we really like that. So we've got this great new boom, 55 meters, 180 feet, taking customers where they, where they have not been able to go before in a mobile boom. Additionally, the power pack on the other side, we offer either a Perkins or a Deutz engine, 74 horsepower for either one. They meet tier four interim or stage 3B engine emission requirements. We're very much interested in the environment, we're complying with all the emissions regulations, and we're very pleased to have that engine in there. Uh, the other thing you're really going to notice with this machine is the undercarriage or the drive chassis. This is what we call our X drive chassis. It's a patented drive chassis. Very heavy gauge box section frames, and when you look around at these, at these box sections and you see the where we have uh, put the, uh, the hoses, they're very well guarded all the way around. We've put hard lines or metal hoses in where we can. We're trying to again make that, them very reliable but again very easy to service. Now this drive chassis has two really important features. One is when the, when the axles are together, when they're contracted. We have a 2.49 meter or a, an 8 foot, foot 6 inch width. So very easy to transport. Nowhere in the world do you need to have an over width permit for this machine, even as big as it is. And it's a 25,000 kilo machine. It's 54,000 pounds. So very easy to transport. In some countries, in some states around the world, you may need to have an, a height permit or a weight permit, but you don't need to have a, uh, an over width permit. I see, yeah. And I now, last, the last thing I would, I would say is when you do extend the axles, they go out to five meters, they go out to 16 feet. So you've got a very stable foundation, an excellent platform from which to work safely and comfortably for the operators and to keep this machine stable and put while you're up 180 feet.
Moving on a little bit about customer focus, I know you mentioned that, that was one of the main reasons uh, why you introduced the machine, but could you expand on that subject a little bit more please? We decided to introduce the machine again based on customer demand. Customers, as, as we've looked at the industry for big booms, customers have said our jobs are taking us higher. We're seeing large utility projects, we're seeing large windmills, um, oil and gas refineries, maintenance type applications that quite frankly we just need higher machines that can take you up to higher levels than we've ever been able to go before. And so we're really answering their request for taller machines, for higher machines. This machine is a 180 foot boom, but how high do you think these machines can go in the future and do you have any plans, or would you have any plans for introducing a higher machine? We haven't gotten that far down the road. Um, it's hard to say where we could go from here. Uh, we're really not at liberty to talk about our, our future plans for new models. I see. And, and you also mentioned some of the, the, the applications. Could you expand on that too, uh, where this machine is finding a majority of its applications or will do? Well, again, it's a, it's a will do. This actually is a prototype machine. Uh, it's one of our prototypes. We are continuing to do test work. Uh, we're about 99% done. We've got some more test work to do, and we'll introduce this machine, by the way, in the second half of the year. Produce it commercially, start shipping it on a global basis. Um, and I, when I talk about the global basis, we really are seeing demand on a global basis. North America, Europe, Latin America, Asia Pacific, China, everywhere, this machine is in demand. And in fact, we have, we have quite a few orders in our system already and uh, looking forward to deliver them literally globally. And c can you tell me at all, you know, wh wh from which areas you've uh, found some, most of your customers so far? Uh, the, the two leading areas right now from a volume standpoint will most likely be North America and Europe. Uh, but again, we've got, we've got customers in Asia Pacific and Latin America that want it too. There's a lot of construction activity going on in those places, particularly new developments. You look at the Middle East and, and, and go to Dubai and Abu Dhabi and Qatar and all of the, all of the infrastructure uh, uh, and building activities that are going on down there. They're just as excited about this machine as, as, as we are in North America right now. I was just in the Middle East. People, are, people can't wait to have this down there. As you've already mentioned, this machine is a prototype, uh, but is there anything else that needs to be done to the machine before it's ready for production? It's pretty much ready to go. When I say it's a prototype, here it has a, a CE pending sticker on it. Uh, we have to do the technical files and a number of, of things to make it CE certified. Uh, it's an early model. We are still, again, doing some test work. We have put out some preliminary specifications. Uh, as we finalize that test work, some of those specs could change, but as I said before, about 99% of it's already pretty hardwired and, and uh, we just have a little bit more to do. Then we'll finalize things from there. But this machine will be eventually uh, configured to meet all of the specifications. It'll be certified, it'll stay here in Europe, and it'll be sold in Europe. Well, thanks very much, Scott, for talking to us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Ewan.